So you've just looked at your wallet value and you've just seen that your XRP, your XLM, your XDC, all the other ISO 222 tokens are have gone mad, right? They've gone absolutely crazy. You're now a millionaire. In fact, so far a millionaire, you're like a hundred millionaire. Now what? Today's video might just be the mentality shift that you need to get this all straight in your head. And look, I'm not wealthy. I literally film in my basement. <laughs> Every video you've ever seen on this channel has basically been filmed on an iPhone 8. I'm getting an iPhone 14 when it comes out, but that's not the point. I'm a normal person with a normal job. So I can't tell you what it's like to be wealthy, but I can say I've spent a disproportionate amount of time thinking about what it would be like to be wealthy. And not just thinking of it on a surface level, which I think most people do, but thinking about it at the level to where, you know, actually, if I have that much money, what do I need to do to manage my money? What is my job now? And what does managing your own wealth actually look like? Who do I need to talk to? Where do I need to go? And that's what I want to share here today. I want this video to serve as a paradigm shift. The first thing is that if your mindset is that US dollars or pounds or euros is the end goal, you've got this whole thing wrong. I get the question all the time, when are you going to sell your XRP? And I go, but, but, sorry, what, what's, why would you ask me that? And I said, well, why would I do that? Why would I sell my XRP? Um, and then I get questions like, oh, even if it reached a thousand dollars, are you sure? Yeah, that's like not the point. The, the point is not to be selling. And this is the paradigm shift I wanted to talk about. The currency that has most value, the thing that has most value, the asset with most value will be XRP. The pound, the dollar, the euro, whatever currency, fiat currency, will not be where the value is. You know that dollars can just be printed endlessly. You know that institutions are trying to get their hands on XRP, XLM, XDC, all of those tokens, especially XLM and XRP, because they're trying to build up these liquidity pools to do these cross-border payments and to use XRP's liquidity function. Right? That is something that's happening. That is happening. So this whole thing is just understanding what the banks want. And as soon as you realize that the banks just want those tokens and they're not looking for dollars, what does that tell you? Well, that tells you that the dollars aren't the place to be. Ultimately, really aren't supposed to be holding XRP. They'll shake everyone out at 10 to $50. Basically, every single person will leave. That will be the single saddest day. That's controversial because I know from, from 10 to $50, millionaires will be made from that. But it's so sad because they'll be leaving from their XLP, from the valuable asset at $10 and going into a worthless asset, into pounds, dollars, euros, where inflation eats them up, purchasing power decreases year on year. And to be quite honest, if you're leaving at that point, you're probably buying a Lambo and you'll be out of money again in like five to 10 years. That's the cold, hard truth. That is not what wealthy people do. Wealthy people know where the value stands in the world. And anyone who's to be in that wealthy class moving forward knows that dollars or fiat isn't the place to be. It's in XRP. And so I had to say that because I have, you have to know that XRP is the thing of value, not the dollars, because it's the XRP you'll be taking in to the likes of PwC or BlackRock, these huge institutions, and you'll be taking advantage of something called crypto staking. Yes, most of you have all heard of staking, but did you know that we will be staking our crypto with large regulated institutions? We will do that because the institutions, the only things they want are crypto assets that make sense for the future of their businesses. If XRP is used for liquidity purposes and cross-border payments, and that will be the system from here on out, you know that they want XRP. XRP is the valuable asset here. The only thing is you as an individual, as a person, have the XRP. If you sell at $10, you don't have the leverage in you don't have the XRP. And PwC, for example, they do have a crypto staking service. You can see right here, they have crypto custody, right? And page three, number five, crypto staking. This is on-chain staking solution, providing a way to earn passive income by locking up a portion of tokens. And it might not be common right now for people, for banks and institutions to have this kind of service yet, they will. <laughs> They'll be offering an interest rate on your XRP and that will earn you the passive income that you need to retire and retire healthily too. So let's run a scenario and let's go on the low end, okay? Let's say you've got a million dollars worth of just XRP. You have no XLM or anything. The first thing I'll be doing when we've hit the end game, 
and I'm not saying it's a million dollars for me, um, I'm just setting this bar really low for everyone. You've got a million dollars worth in your ledger. What you do is, is you have to decide at that moment, okay, how much do I want to have as fun money? I wouldn't go over 20% of that amount. At million dollars, you can't really do much with it, with a million dollars, but percentage wise, just, just bear with me. Just use that to, I don't know, buy rental properties, uh, go to Disney with your family. I don't know. Well, that's stuff that you can just spend on. The things that you, that are going to reward you for having waited and learned so much and tried so hard to make money over the last few years. But the remaining 80%, so now we've got $800,000, that's going to go with you on your ledger to the likes of PwC. All of this might take place over the course of the first two months of you having all this money, but you have to take those two months because if you go straight away and your brain your brain goes crazy and you go, oh, uh, oh, I want to buy my car now, I want to buy my Ford F-150. That's kind of like the, the problem I'll have. <laughs> you need a couple of months to, to really figure this out. You need to get on the phone with an accountant, not just any accountant, accountant that has experience working with high net worth individuals. You need to find out who that person is now. Have that person ready to call on speed dial for when the time comes. And I say speed dial because if you don't call them fast, your emotions may get may get ahead of you. You need to call that person fast and say, I've got assets. I need to figure out the tax implications of all of this. Here's my plans for what I'm doing, what are the tax implications of this. And I you basically don't want to go to jail for not paying the right taxes, right? So you need an accountant in place. Have have him or her ready already before any of this happens. Next, you're going to call the representative at the at the institution who works on crypto staking. In this PwC document, you go right down to the bottom and it literally gives you the names of the representatives in your country. So if you're in the UK, that's Hayden Jones and that's his email. Have that email ready to go. You may even want to preliminarily message him or, or your representative and ask, what kind of rates are you looking at right now? Any questions that you've got, ask them, say, say at some point I may have enough money to start staking with PwC. Can you provide me more information than is on the booklet? But you need these people down. This is just one institution of the many that will have this type of service. And actually over the next kind of few weeks or so, I'm gonna be doing these phone calls to these people I'm going to be calling accountants. I'm going to be getting all of that in place, learning. I will share as much of that as I can on here. The point is, you can't take a million dollars into PwC and say, can I stake my million dollars with you? You'll get a normal interest. What we're talking about with you bringing your XRP in is that you're bringing them something they want. They will reward you accordingly, maybe up to 15% interest. You've got $800,000 worth of XRP staked with them. And now all of a sudden, basically got $10,000 every month for the rest of your life because you acted properly and put your $800,000 in XRP staked at an institution that is regulated. Forget DeFi, that's not what's important here. The real wealth comes in this transition of deregulated to regulated. That's when the change of wealth happens. Because you know who doesn't miss out on this change, this massive shift in wealth? The institutions they don't miss out. In fact, they become richer because they make the right moves. Those are the smartest people in the world, regardless of what they put out, the smoke and mirrors that they show everyone in retail. One thing is for sure, they do not lose. And acknowledging that they do not lose and they want XRP, you need to be offering XRP to them. Again, that's the real value. So homework assignment for everyone right now is to find someone close to you to put on speed dial, who is a high net worth individual accountant. They have handled clients before who've had a lot of money. You also want to try to note down as many of the representatives for these institutions, PwC, BlackRock, Boyds of London. Try and find the people who potentially would be in charge of the crypto staking. Like I said, over the next few weeks, I'm going to try and get names together, institutions together to display that in a document. That will be members only, so join as a member if you want to see that. And just, I'm just saying, 99.99999% of people are going to leave XRP completely at $10. Not understanding why XRP is going to be a $10,000 coin up. And you would have left at $10. You'd have taken your $2 million when it could have been literally like $400 million. And you took it away at two. Don't do that to yourself. XRP is the real value. That's what the banks want. And that's what you're going to give the banks. 
They don't care about dollars. Anyway, if that was useful, great. <laughs> you actually in a lot better position now if you've learned something. The next few videos are actually going to be more detailed, but I just want to give this overview. Stay emotionless out there. I'll see you in the next one.